Hi, and welcome back to the Media Zone here in the DevNet Zone at Cisco Live 2023 in Europe. My name is Ryan Rose, and I'm the Director of Learning and Development here with the DevNet team. Joining us is Will Etherton, SVP of Engineering. Will, we're really happy to have you here. Um, we have been excited to be able to interview a lot of our leaders and experts at Cisco. Uh, to talk about the work that they're doing and to really show our audience some insights about Cisco. Um, maybe you could start on telling us a little bit about uh, what your role is at Cisco. Uh, thanks, Ryan. It's uh, been great at Cisco Live so far, uh, both meeting lots of customers as well as a lot of folks in Cisco. Um, so for myself, uh, the, the team, it's uh, distributed systems engineering, and some of the moves that Cisco has been making organization-wise is to get away some from the former uh, business units and combine groups engineering-wise um, that would allow us, in particular with areas like controllers and APIs to integrate. So my, my group is service provider, data center, um, and that includes everything from the XR and NX on the system sides to the controller aspects, uh, subscriber, mobility, uh, areas and intersight for the compute area. That's awesome. Now, Cisco recently released a, uh, a small press announcement about the work that we're doing now with T-Mobile. Could, could you give us a little bit more on that? Because this is directly uh, connected to the work you're doing. Yes, yeah, so uh, it actually uh, started three or four years ago when I first came back to Cisco. Uh, we were engaged with T-Mobile on a, a revamp of their entire packet core. And everyone, when they think about the you know, 4G, 5G, they think about the radios and the changes, the new radio. But the, the big aspect that we've been involved with is the software side. So uh, what previously had been physical appliances that had been deployed in major cities across the country went to a complete software combined 4G, 5G, um, that was deployed in Kubernetes. Oh, wow. uh, and so that was a project we put together from the scratch over the past three or four years and is today um, now deployed across 57 sites. I think it's uh, five to 10,000 servers, 100,000 containers um, operating 24 seven you know, for their, their mobile network. We, we've been impressed to see the growth of bandwidth. You know, they're in tens of terabits uh, with capacity up to a you know, 100 terabit kind of area. So it's been a big project um, with lots of software engineering. Oh, I could only imagine, I mean, this massive amount of work too. I mean, can I ask you, how was something like that automated? Like, I, I imagine, especially everything we're doing in the DevNet zone, we're always mm -hmm. trying to figure out how do we automate this? How, how did you all accomplish that level of automation? So T-Mobile had been using the Cisco uh, NSO, Network Service Orchestrator, uh, to some degree before this project. This project was built from the grounds up using NSO, and NSO was used um, for everything from the base uh, lower level server infrastructure, running K8's infrastructure, to the application config, all of the, the network functions that make up the mobile packet core, um, and then even the configuration of you know, how they wanted their packet core to be run to make this nationwide network. So um, it's, it's you know, again, was, was built in through the years and it's been uh, a big success. So we've been able to do things like, you know, with Timo rollout, um, nationwide updates and, you know, s starting, you do uh, FOA, first, uh, first office availability, but going from that within um, days uh, to be able to do nationwide. And the big advantage of NSO is it can go in parallel uh, across the, the entire infrastructure. So that's been a big component. Um, and then there's also aspects around monitoring, um, which is more open source conventional. So there's, you know, every, every site has, I think, on the order of 100,000 KPIs uh, that we've put in into the software, um, and I think this is really for all software, enge software engineers a big, you know, big topic, which is when you do these infrastructure, you need to put all those KPIs in up front. It's very hard to do it after, and we've had fun challenges like they would see a voice, you know, a slight disturbance in a voice KPI uh, in one of their sites, and then they would be you know, contacting us, and we would go through and look at time trace and take that all the way down to we're seeing like a, 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 a SSD stall, IO stall in a Linux kernel. You know, and the number of layers of software, it just blows your mind. And troubleshooting the system is quite complex. So it comes back, you know, always put in all the KPAs, all the layers, you know, keep that time history and be ready to go back in time and do those debugging. Oh yeah. my gosh, I mean, uh, that just sounds amazing. 
You know, well, we haven't been able to talk about this before, but mm -hmm. I actually work a lot with the NSO team. Mm -hmm. um, and NSO is uh, an offer that we have at Cisco that is one of my personal favorites. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also been something that has been going through some improvements lately. Maybe you could also tell our audience a little bit about what is new with NSO. Sure. Um, so I, I also uh, have loved uh, having the NSO team, I think, for the last two or three years in my group. I uh, enjoy going and, and meeting folks from the, the Sweden, the regional tail oh, app. Yeah. Uh, very, very sharp engineer. So NSO itself um, has gone through, I'd say, a couple different major things. One is performance. So in the 6X release, uh, there was pretty significant performance, and that actually came out of engagements we had with, you know, for instance, some other uh, service providers, uh, Rakuten, where we had hundreds of thousands of devices, and the time it would take was was longer than was acceptable. And and what we found is, while they were a super large, uh, the, the performance improvements we could make there, in some cases, 10x could benefit all of our customers, and so that that was big. Um, and then I also uh, have been very happy to see that we're adding things like plugins for Visual Studio. Code uh, that where you can attach uh, to an instance of NSO in the future more instances, a multi instance, um, and you can start to do some of that exploration and debug of your NSO directly from VSC, which is, you know, seems to be the default for all of our engineers. <laughs> yes. No, uh, you know, and again, it's like people, it's such a powerful tool, and mm -hmm. when you start to get into it, it's just there's so much that you can do, but but your organization has been really providing a lot of capabilities to the enterprise, to service providers. And I guess one of the things that I think uh, for anybody that's here that's in either one uh, of those divisions, it's how, how do you see now um, network engineers, like uh, network engineers and developers from service providers and uh, enterprise being able to uh, collaborate yeah. for automation? Yeah, so I mean, there's been a lot of talk about CICD for a couple of years, and yeah. um, I think, you know, I, I've now seen some examples where things have, have really gotten concrete. A lot of times these things have a lot of hype to them. Um, you know, an example would be some of the engagement we've had with DISH. So, you know, we traditionally, um, you know, we, uh, the way we offer software, either you have a SaaS service, that's pretty, you know, it's API, it's SaaS, it's fixed, uh, or, you know, there was the old days of physical appliance, we put our software, and then there's been this intermediate of, you know, we would offer a, a VM that could be an AMI on AWS, or it could be a, 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 a like an OVA or VMDK on, on VMware or OpenStack. Um, and so as we've gone into models where we've been doing like container architecture, we would then package those into a VM that we would then you know, send to the customer and they would deploy. I think what we've seen in, 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 in some recent cases, like uh, with Dish, is where um, they wanted to decompose with us mm. uh, some of these you know, highly complex VM level packages and have the individual services running the containers uh, in a K8's infra to be mapped to their AWS uh, instances, uh, VPCs that uh, would be running EKS. And so this is not, and this is not a mature model yet, so it was very much in the spirit of CICD, where we did work with them for our crosswork network controller, do that decomposition, and AWS was also very involved, um, and that is being used to, to manage, I think, 25, 30,000 no, uh, devices in a, in a DISH network. And so, um, you know, some of the lessons from that is that it does change, you know, we test typically around those larger packages. Now yeah. you're talking about smaller. So you, we do have to think about software lifecycle. So yep. are we releasing? So I think for all software developers, you know, finding that where's the balance of software deployment, uh, granularity, and, you know, what does that mean long term as far as how you support? So we'll see, you know, it's still early, but I find it interesting when we engage in these new, in that kind of model, and we'll see how it goes. That's great, and well, thank you so much too for kind of providing like the lessons that, I mean, really our entire audience can take from that. And if I can say, one of the things I've always liked about working at Cisco, and I've been here 13 years, is we have leaders like yourself that are deeply technical and can get into the weeds on a lot of the things that we are working on every single day. And if I could ask you, one of the things that we see as kind of a trend that's happening in our industry is that embrace of ML, mm -hmm. all that machine learning that's going on. And that's affecting how we do so much of our work. That's affecting even how we look at deployments. Yeah. And I guess one of the questions that I have for you, given your deep technical background and, and your role here at Cisco is, um, how can we help our network engineers and really anyone that's working on a Cisco programmable network, 
how do we how can we help them better prepare for that ML rise and that ML trend and, and maybe even some insights on what they should be focusing on doing? Sure. Um, so first, I mean, uh, I'll try to get specific because it's an area that it's easy to talk hype and not really you know, have anything concrete to say. First of all, there's two major, as, as, for, as I see it, two major way that folks can engage technically right now. You know, there's you putting aside open AI codex for a minute. Yeah. Um, there's really GitHub Copilot and there's yeah. ChatGPT. Um, ChatGPT, you know, is in the context still of you know you put a prompt, you get a very um, full answer uh, representation. So you could ask for config, you know, to to, to uh, uh, add an interface, and it will help you generate config on you know the CLI. I think that is still in the interesting, but it isn't as useful in day to day work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's been examples of folks generating entire programming projects off of these uh, things, but the correctness and the ability to influence it are still, uh, I would say, are not quite professional software engineering. Now, things like GitHub Copilot, which is very interesting, um, they've been around a year. What we see is a lot of engineers are using it on their own, but the companies haven't necessarily, and you know, whether it's large companies and Cisco's one of them, haven't yet taken much position on you know, what is the meaning of using that. So you, you, you put in Visual Studio Code, you might write a comment, I'd like to generate a function header, a function that does this, and it will generate just that snippet, so it becomes very much more an aid to the programmer. And I think what we're seeing is it, it does absolutely help pro productivity. Um, it's really you know, quality-wise, I think we'll have to see how it pans out. I, in my mind, I don't see it as a lot different than engineers who go in and look at code on Stack Overflow and bring that over. Um, but the, there's still there's some legal court cases right now. Yeah. Um, it's still early, but it's seeming like this is something that I'm hoping we can more sort of formally endorse in more of the, the, the uh, larger software houses and see that, that this can go into mission critical code. So it's, I would say, somewhat there, and I absolutely folks are experimenting with it. Um, and I think certainly if you're doing things like network operations and scripts, super awesome. You know, where maybe there isn't going to be as much concern about it being compiled into. So, so absolutely can be leveraged there. And you know, where when I've played around, what I love is because I I'm more broad and thin. I don't go real deep. <laughs> I like playing around different languages. If you're polyglot, it is awesome because you don't have to remember all the syntax and get it all right. So you can right. jump between Python and Go, and it's, it's very awesome. So, yeah. Well, I could honestly have you here all day and talk mm -hmm. to you. Um, uh, but, uh, I'm sure uh, that would get very long for you. No, I'm telling you, <laughs> this is like, these are yes. the types of sessions that I live for. When we can get like into the weeds mm -hmm. with like specific examples, and even just giving an example of like how ML can really be that benefit, no, and okay. trust me, we could go into deep on GPT, uh, chat GPT. The, um, the, I guess one last question though for our audience here. Given all of these products and all of this technology that you know about and all these capabilities that we're able to open up for networking engineers and developers, is what, you know, what are the areas where you think Cisco can even help developers and network engineers do more? Um, and what's a, a great interface that you think for developers with uh, Cisco? Yeah. So first, I uh, just want to say, um, because I'm going to get to things we can do better in a minute. Before I get that, uh, I, I have seen um, that we've been able to improve with uh, DevNet uh, help. Uh, and I was in a customer meeting earlier today where they were saying that uh, some specifically APIs that had in my team um, in the data center area that had been uh, worked with DevNet to improve the, the the quality of those that they were seeing that, that was better than it had been a year ago that they were right. seeing improve. So I think that some of these around you know grading APIs and and getting a better view of um, more consistent because you know some products we have a lot of focus some products maybe we don't have as much um, trying to get that more consistent across is making progress and is helping. With that said, I still when I look across all of our domains and of course Cisco has you know more breadth than than most any. Other other company, um, we still have too much siloing on topics like, and you know, folks don't necessarily need the APIs to be exactly the same, but the, the representation of something like you know, uh, concrete primitives like an interface, whether it's you know, logical or physical, how does that get created, what's that mean relative to a line card, relative to a chassis, how does that look in a hierarchy, and in different controllers, 
that could be represented entirely separate. Um, and we need to, over time, it won't happen immediately, we need to have that be more common and it is something we're working towards. So I think that will get to the point, it'll make it much easier for folks that are automating across domains um, to do so. And again, the APIs don't have to be exact, but the, the schemas really need to be more common. So I, that's the golden, we're going to head towards that. No, I, I like that. I, I think that all of our developer audience too hears that and probably agrees as well. I, I think that it's a great goal, but for us, I think we've been marching towards that horizon. So yes. that's excellent. Well, Will, thank you again thank so you, much Ryan. for joining us. Great. Really appreciate, appreciate you uh, being on the show with us. And again, for everyone at home, if you're interested in this or more, please visit developer.cisco.com. In addition to finding all of the technologies that Will was talking about, including a developer page on NSO, uh, you can find learning labs, sandboxes, and of course code that you can get hands on with today. So again, thank you for joining us and we can't wait to see what you create with DevNet. Thank you so much.